Welcome to She Sells Radio. I am so, so excited to be here with you. And oh my goodness, so much has changed. So much has changed um, in the past several months since I have not been podcasting. And even as I record this, it's 5 a.m. Uh, my little one, he's now three months old, is sleeping upstairs. I'm watching him on the monitor and I am praying that he lets me get through this whole episode. <laughs> I didn't used to record like this. This is very new for me. So shout out to all you mamas out there. Um, so I'm even as I record this, I am probably not um, vocalizing as loud as I usually would. So I've got an amazing producer. I know he's going to hook us up on the sound <laughs> and make it work. But man, I'm excited to be back. I'm so excited to be back. And um, everything this year, I, I know your year has just probably radically transformed the way you think about yourself and your business. And, and it's done the same for me too, but I've been on a bit of a hiatus for about three months and I gave myself permission to do that. Um, had our little one in late July of this year and he's our first baby and the timing actually just perfectly aligned with me knowing that I knew that I wanted to relaunch and create this new brand this year and the timing perfectly aligned for me to just take a break for a little bit from the podcast, kind of from social media too. And that felt really hard. I will tell you this. Um, there's a big piece of me who's like the content creator, the, you know, thinking of myself as a media company, like, like Jay Bear talks about, we are, you are a media company now. And media companies don't run on inspiration. They run on perspiration, kind of talking about the importance of consistency of content. Each of us, if we're running a business or in sales, we are really a media company. And so giving myself permission to really follow my instincts and not push to put out content just for the sake of putting out content to kind of keep things going. I mean, we still, my team and I still have been putting out like re-releasing old episodes, if you've noticed that on social, but I really gave myself permission to pause and kind of recalibrate um, to say, what can I create in the world with the launch, with the relaunch of this brand into the She Sells brand that would get me so excited and fired up to listen and pay attention if I was on the other end of this? And sometimes we have to give ourselves permission to take a break and to breathe. And I think in our world today, there is so much pressure to constantly be creating content and putting things out. You know, if you're in any sort of revenue producing role, whether you're a business owner or a salesperson, you're probably feeling that way. But sometimes we put something out just to check the box and put it out. And I really don't think that's a value. And so one of the, hopefully I can just share like an early lesson here um, for me that I've learned this year is giving myself permission to take a break and to look inside myself for guidance and approval on my strategy rather than outside. And what my inner being and guidance was telling me this year was you need to take a break over the summer, be with your son, figure out how to do this whole mom thing, which trust me, I'm still really figuring that out. I'll probably be figuring that out the rest of my life. <laughs> um, but give yourself permission to follow your instincts and to kind of take a step back. And that is, I think for any of us who believe in mentorship and coaching, which I, oh my gosh, I probably have spent the vast majority, not the vast majority, but a lot of the money I've made in my business on coaching and mentoring over the years. And it's been so worth it. It's been so worth it. But I think what happens is there's value to coaching and mentoring, but we can give away our power if we stop trusting our own guidance too. So I want to encourage you, if you're feeling called to do something that's a little bit different, even from what you're hearing from your mentors or your coaches trust yourself in that there is something there there is something there for you and with with the whole theme of this podcast and this brand which i'll get into in today's episode um, that's really the underlying core truth that i want you to remember is to trust yourself you have so many of the answers inside of you that are going to get you to where you want to go 
So kind of a, a little bit of explanation behind the transition of the brand. Um, and, and by the way, welcome back if you are a longtime listener and I'm so glad you're here. And if you're brand new and you're like, I didn't know there was ever anything other than She Sells Radio, that's cool. Welcome. You're joining at the perfect time. But um, you know, one of my favorite things is to really help people lift their voice and have things be amplified. I love that. My background, my training is in journalism. I love going out and getting stories of people. Um, and then with, I've done multiple podcasts now over the past five years. I've always loved just putting people in the spotlight and helping them shine and kind of see how amazing they are. And I love that. And you as a listener may not know that I physically haven't really been able to do that for myself for the past several years. And I'm not going to get into a lot of details um, because legally I can't. And that's actually a big lesson that I have learned over the past several years is really pay attention to the deals you sign. But um, I, you know, I signed a non-compete several years ago. And um, when I exited a a company that I was a part of and I become a partner in within that company, I basically had a two year time period where I couldn't talk about what I personally feel really called to talk about which is sales and helping you make more money and helping you learn how to sell. And so, you know, there were parts of me there that I basically signed away on the dotted line without really knowing what I was doing. And again, I think everything happens perfectly for a reason. And for me, I've really learned to pay attention. And if something doesn't quite feel right, pay attention to that and dig deeper into it. I didn't trust myself enough to say, oh, you know, at least your instinct is, this may not be the best deal to sign, but everybody else, you know, everyone I talk to, attorneys, et cetera, like, it's fine, go for it. Um, so again, I kind of gave away my power in that. Here's the deal though, that's all in the past and I'm back. <laughs> and that time period is over and I feel so on fire and I have ideas for you and things that I wish I could have told my younger self um, and that I wish I could have told you that have just been bottled up for years now and I really have free reign to go wherever I want to go. And I cannot tell you how freaking good that feels. <laughs> and, you know, as, as I think about just the creation of this brand, and this is something that I want to hopefully share value with you in as well. Um, one of the things we teach at a company, Brand Builders Group, that I, I helped start a couple of years ago, is that the person you can most powerfully serve is your former self you are most powerfully positioned to serve who you used to be. And, you know, I, I've in the sales coaching world, I've spent years and years now in sales coaching and mentoring. And then, like I said, took a two year hiatus and break with my non-compete, um, working more in the personal branding space. And now I'm really doing both, which is fun, but I've served all different types of people. And, and really about, I'd say about half to 60, maybe even 70% of my clients at many times have been men. And I love my men. Um, I love serving them. I love working with them. I still do. And I have really felt called to step up in a bigger way to serve women lately. And, um, you know, as I, as I think about serving my former self and just speaking to her and what she needed, um, it's been an emotional journey. And it's been, man, it's, I would say the past seven, eight years have been really a journey of transformation. And when I think about who I was um, at, gosh, maybe age 27, (laughs) you know, I think about being ambitious, um, almost to the point of harming myself. And I don't know if you can relate to that, but I knew what I wanted. I was determined to get it. Um, I knew that I wanted to make good money and have a certain lifestyle. And I was very used to being, you know, the top producer in whatever I did. And I did media sales for a long time of different, different types, um, working with small and medium sized businesses. And then some of the biggest brands in the world to help them grow their, you know, their business and generate leads online. And I was used to being a top producer in my office. And that was kind of the status that I had achieved and then I kept, but I, the way that I achieved goals wasn't always kind to myself. If that makes sense, I would burn the candle at both ends. I would, you know, get survive on two to three hours of sleep a night. I would put myself in situations with clients who 
didn't respect me. I would take on clients who, um, who sexually harassed me, who, like I said, just didn't respect me. I, and, and I take ownership of that I, with all of this. I want to be very clear. I would take ownership because I didn't know how to set proper boundaries because I didn't really believe that I deserved boundaries. I believed that to be successful, I needed to be all things to all people. I needed to be able to transform like a chameleon to make whoever I was talking to in that moment happy and satisfied. And I had totally lost my sense of self. And on a personal level about this time, like I said, about age 27 is really where a lot of the transformation started for me. Um, I, I was in a bad place and I've talked about this on former episodes. Um, but you know, I was in a, a marriage, I got married, um, at age 26. So it is, you could tell it was a short lived marriage. I did a Kim, I'll say I did a Kim Kardashian. It was like a 14 month marriage. Um, but I was married to someone who at the time was a vibrational match for me. You know, I, I really believe, and I, I, I know we attract and pull people in who are vibrational matches and, um, don't blame him for any of that. He was a match for me. And I learned so much about what I don't want through that experience and, uh, was just feeling very trapped and very stuck in that relationship because it really suppressed in order to keep the relationship going. I had to suppress almost all of who I was, um, to fit in the box that was comfortable for him. He had addiction issues and things he was, um, recovering from, and that felt very stifling. And I was very afraid of judgment and what people would say and think if I exited that relationship. Um, I was still struggling with an eating disorder. You know, in my teens, I, um, I started really uh, just starving myself for lack of better words. And I went through that for, for a long time and um, got dangerously low <laughs> weight and then got through some recovery and, um, and just coaching and therapy there. But then I was in this binge cycle for years. And so I was still secretly struggling with that. And, you know, for, for many reasons, 28 has always been my favorite number when I was born on the 28th, um, to like, I just, I see 28s everywhere all the time. So I really feel like that's one of my angel numbers. And I remember when I was turning 28, I said, I am not available for this year to be the same as the past years have been. And I said, I have to make a change. I, I am not available for this year, this one 28 year of my life, this go round on the planet um, to suck, <laughs> just not. And so I started this journey of really releasing and remembering. And I think that's so much of where our power lies is when we can learn to release and remember. And for me, it was a releasing of the need to live up to other people's expectations and try to make everybody else happy at the expense of my own happiness. So I did get a divorce. I did start to get more help for the eating issues that I was struggling with. I did start to you know, dive into personal development and resources um, to help me remember who I have been all along, but had bottled up and smothered because I didn't think she was good enough. And it gets me so emotional right now to even think about because I know I may be hitting you somewhere along that journey and I know how hard it is and I know how, oh, how scary it can be to say, am I safe if I'm truly myself? And I didn't know at the time if I was going to be safe in the world. And here's what I can say, sister, it's been, and here's what I'll say to you. I know there's plenty of men who are going to listen to this and I love you so much and please keep listening. Um, and I will address my listeners mostly as women just because of the kind of the focus of this show now. Um, but just know you are welcome, whoever you are and however you, <laughs> however you come, you are welcome. Um, but here's what I will say is if you are on part of that journey of releasing and remembering and kind of coming into your own um, especially as somebody who identifies as a woman today, you, there is so much power inside of you when you learn to just show up as you are. Oh my gosh, there's so much power. And that's part of why I'm here. That's a huge part of why I'm here. I have learned to value feeling good about myself, about my life, 
about how I choose to interact with other people, what I choose to accept and not accept for myself, I have learned to value that over almost anything else in life. And I used to discredit feelings, right? I think so much of what we are taught in terms of either sales training or business strategy is it doesn't matter how you feel, just do it. And while there is value in showing up um, and there is value in putting in the work, even when sometimes we're tired or sometimes we quote unquote don't feel like it, I want to challenge that and push that a bit because when we learn to discredit our feelings, we turn off our power. Your feelings are a powerful guidance system for you in terms of whether you're on the right track or the wrong track. And, and you know, when you're out of alignment, when you've spent so many years kind of bottling up how you feel and learning not to trust your feelings, it can take a while to get back into your truth of knowing whether a feeling is guiding you in the right direction or the wrong direction. So just know it can be a process, but pretty much everything I do now I take action based on feeling good and feeling inspired about something because I've really stripped away the layers that were kind of keeping me between myself and my truth. And I've learned to trust myself. So what I'm feeling called to do right now, uh, you know, I am still, I'm just super passionate about helping women specifically sell and make more money. And that comes from you know, my background. I've spent gosh, wow, this is, I mean, I feel old when I say this, but about 20 years now in sales of some sort or another, whether selling for a company, for a corporation or running my own business. And I've, I used to um, teach sales as well. So when I was a partner in a sales coaching company, I taught salespeople how to sell and I sold to salespeople and it's all very meta, <laughs> but I've seen what's taught and there's some really good stuff out there and there's some really harmful stuff out there. And I got fed up with telling people to do things that just feel really gross to them. And I saw so much of my colleagues and so much of what was out there in the sales training and coaching world um, that did that and that felt gross, whether it was just like a corny closing technique or manipulation to try to get somebody to manufacture pain for them that doesn't exist so that they'll buy. And that comes from scarcity mindset. It comes from the mindset of, of linear thinking too, you know, just make, you just make a hundred calls a day, you'll hit your goals. Well, is that true? Yes, possibly. Um, is that how we as women are naturally wired to work? No, not really. You know, as a woman, you think differently and the linear, the masculine, that can be, there's so much value in that. And if we totally cut off our feminine power, which is intuition, instinct, being unreasonable, you know, getting a hunch that, hey, this person would like to connect with you today. You need to reach out to this specific person today. It's not about making a hundred calls like a robot. Um, this one specific person is ready to buy from you today. When we can learn to trust ourselves and to do things differently and to value our intuition, our instinct, our connection, that's your magic. That's where your true power lies. And it's not about just being a robot every single day, cranking out, you know, a hundred emails or a hundred calls or what's taught by so many of these frankly outdated structures. Again, I'm not saying you can't achieve your goals that way because you can, but I tell you what, you'll feel like you're dying inside while you do. That's the difference. That is the difference. I want to help you learn and embrace celebrating your whole self. The whole woman is celebrated on this show. That's where your true power lies when you get in touch with all of her. And when you strip away the layers that have been stifling you and disconnecting you from your core truth and your core power. And I think as women, myself included, we've put away so much and we've hidden so much. We've hidden and, and suppressed our voice, our earning potential, our power, um, again, our intuition. And here's the thing, you've always had it all along. You've always had it all along. Growth is just allowing you to bring all of you to the table and a remembering of who you really are. And as I record this, I turned 35 a couple of days ago and 
I always make a wish right before the, the time at which I was born, which is 525. So it was 524 and I was standing outside with uh, my husband and our, our three month old Jack. And I was just sitting there thinking about, gosh, this year is so different than other years, mainly because I'm a mom, but also because of this brand and this, this, these <laughs> ideas that have been bottled up for years that I can finally bring out. And I thought, what's my wish? right before I turned 35 officially. And it was to let me experience the fullness of myself. That was it. It was let me experience the fullness of myself. And I wish that for you as well. And, you know, sales has been a dirty word, right? When you hear about a salesperson, you kind of get that slick, that slimy, um, that's, that's that slimy image. And I want to redefine that. I really want to redefine that into this is a place of our power. And when we feel gross about what we're doing, it's really hard to do it well. It's really hard to do it well. And I want to redefine what it means to sell, to make money. And I'm on this journey with you. This is a discovery for me too of how can we sell and how can we grow our businesses in a way that feels great for us and the person we're working with. So we're really redefining something here. And I think it's great to be helpful and to receive tools, but it's another thing to be groundbreaking. And this show and the intention of She Sells Radio is to be really groundbreaking. And as I was writing, I was rewriting my podcast description for my producer um, over this weekend. And <laughs> the description that came to me was, what if Grant Cardone and Marianne Williamson had a love child? <laughs> and with all due respect to their partners, uh, because I, I do value, I, I, I value both of them and what they bring into the world, but it was, that's kind of what this is. You know, we're going to get hard hitting tactical strategy for growing your business, specifically your sales. And we're going to do it in a way that feels really good to us and to the person we're serving. That's it. And so that's why I've come here in this way to really relaunch and review with you things about sales, visibility, and feminine leadership and review what's really true now for us and also redefine what needs to shift. As I, we all know this, I don't need to belabor this point. 2020 has been a year of what needs to shift, what needs to change. And this is the time for, for us to really examine that and to shift some things in this industry as a whole. And I, I hope you'll go on this journey with me. Um, I would say with that, you know, there's a difference between educating and remembering. And sometimes we're educating, which is a lot of what the tactical strategy is going to be. But most of the time, we're really remembering. And this is going to be a remembering. And my hope for you is that in this journey, even though we're talking about sales, it's not really sales. It's about you coming into your true power, your full alignment, the fullest expression of all of you and allowing that to flow through because that's when the money making gets effortless and easy. That's when you're on fire. That's when you get that hunch, that inspiration to do that post, to invite that person on your podcast, to reach out to that client. And the, the impact is multiplied tenfold. And so with that, <laughs> there's, I wanted to share with you just three things that I would tell my younger self uh, that I wish I had known back when I was, let's say, 26, 27. And well, I wish I had known this all along. But again, I did. Going kind of meta here, I did. I wish I had remembered this earlier. So um, here's what I would tell my younger self and what I would tell you as well to kind of help set you up for success on this journey. The first thing is to trust yourself. Three things I would tell my younger self. Number one, trust yourself. Your instincts may not make logical sense. In fact, they probably won't. <laughs> and I used to, I cut off my feminine power, oh man, completely because I was scared of it. And I thought it, it, it made me unsafe in the world. And I'll get into this on future shows, um, but I've had a really kind of tumultuous relationship <laughs> with the feminine part of myself. And cutting her off and again, making her uh, feeling unsafe because she made me feel either, you know, over-sexualized and unsafe, or I thought she was weak, right? We have so much stigma. Um, 
And as I have gone on this journey of healing that relationship over the past several years, there's so much power. There is so much power in your feminine instincts. Um, so it's been quite a journey for me, but again, we have to remember, I'm smiling because as I look at the clock right now, it's, it's 528. And again, like I said, 28s just show up when things are, when things are right and flowing. So I hope this is flowing well for you. It is for me. Um, so we have to remember that the feminine is not logical. It's unreasonable. It's quote unquote irrational. That's not a bad thing. Um, it's, but it is what creates the quantum leap. It's where things don't go from A to B to C to D. It's where things go from A to Z quickly. Because when you tap into your true power there, again, you're going to get those instincts, those hunches, those inspirations that take you to exactly where you need to go in less time. And what I've learned is every time I've followed on an instinct, I've been better for the following of it. And the, the key is to stay in your heart and not your head. You know, there's value in the, again, there's the masculine supports the feminine. This is something I've got to give a shout out to my personal mentor over like the past year and a half, almost two years now, Gina DeVee. She's taught me so much of this. So major shout out to her. The masculine supports the feminine. So there is value in logic, in linear structures, in, um, in thinking things through with your head. But when you let it get in the way of your heart, you're usually going to go on a detour that's not going to serve you. So I want to encourage you, stop looking for approval outside of you. Trust yourself. You know what to do. Number two, give yourself permission to do things differently. I told you uh, previously, I was, I was a partner in an eight-figure international sales coaching organization, and I'd worked my way up in that company and had, um, had built a team and was you know, running a really successful business there. And part of what was taught there, though, was very linear uh, I would say kind of inside the box thinking, you know, here's how you grow your business. You make X number of calls a day and you just do that consistently over time and you'll reach your goals. Now, look, people did reach their goals that way. <laughs> like I said, I tried to do it that way and it was painful. It was so painful. So secretly I did things differently <laughs> and I, I followed my instincts and I remember there was this one client who I'd been calling him for close to a year and he just, you know, he would either flake on our calls. Like I would finally reach him. He was a potential client. I should say he wasn't a client yet. He was a prospect. Um, but I was doing the thing I was told to do with him. I was reaching out. I was calling him every, you know, every month I was, I was doing the outreach and he would either send me to voicemail or he would schedule a call and then no show. <laughs> and so I got tired of it and I was like, I'm just going to do something different. So I sent the guy a video email, just, you know, I was coming back from a mastermind. I was in the airport. I had terrible lighting. Um, I was in a t-shirt. I don't think I had showered that day. And this is a guy who's in like a high, high level financial services company. So I will say this was a risk. Um, so anyway, it wasn't a very, you know, it wasn't a polished professional outreach by any means, but I just told him, I was like, Hey, I really want to connect with you. I know we haven't been able to connect. Um, hey, I'm here at the airport. I'm about to board my flight. You are on my mind. I would love if we could connect. I'm going to be, and he was in DC. I was like, I'm going to be in DC in the next couple of weeks, which I wasn't, but <laughs> I knew I would be if he responded and um, would love to just pop by for 15 minutes. Send off this video email and he gets back to me almost instantly. He says, I so appreciate how different that was. Yes. Come meet with me. Let's see what you got. I'm open to hearing about it. So you better believe I booked myself a trip to DC in the next, I think it was like two weeks after that and went on to close a six figure deal with this guy. You have to give yourself permission to do things differently than what you've been taught before. We are being called now to do things differently and different is a good thing. Oftentimes, uh, Sally Hogshead has a great quote. She says, different is better than better. Give yourself permission to do things differently. And I think you'll be dazzled at what can happen on the other side of that. Third thing I would tell my younger self, your relationship with money is really about your relationship with yourself, okay? Your relationship with money is really about your relationship with yourself. If you're struggling at all with money, it's not actually about the money. And I am, I'm humbled and I even get chills as I share this because that has been 
my relationship with money has been one of the most um, transformational relationships of my life. And I'm still on this journey, but oh, it's so much better than it was even a year ago. You know, it, it's, it's, it hasn't even been that long that I think I've really gotten this. But I want to I wanna share this with you because I used to get so stressed out about, so stressed out about money and would there be enough and how would I pay my bills and what happened if a client would cancel and oh my God, and I would have so much drama around it. And it's, it's what I've learned is it was never really about the money. It was about the reality I'd constructed for myself about how worthy and deserving I was of love and support. And clearly I didn't feel that worthy and deserving of it. And we'll do, I'm going to have some real like money experts on here, both from a more of a um, tactical standpoint, financial management, investing. I think that's something that we need to be really well supported in. How do we do that? And then also from a mindset standpoint, um, just how do we, how do we change our mindset around money? So just know we're going to go way deeper into this because I think this is one of the things that can most transform your life. Uh, but you know, like I said, it's when you don't think you're worthy or deserving of support, that's going to really show up and manifest in your relationship with money. And when you're constantly caught up in a cycle of worry about money, you can't show up in your most powerful way and you can't help people in a powerful way either. So usually what, what I've learned too, is it stems from our relationship with whoever raised us. It's root chakra stuff. Our relationship with money is very basic instinct. It's protection, it's survival. Um, and that's also where our relationship with typically our parents or whoever raised us, um, it, that's, that's a protection, right? That's love, that's safety. And for me, I was always pretty good at making money, but I was always afraid I was gonna lose it. I always had this fear of it's all gonna go away. You're gonna mess up and do something quote unquote irresponsible and it's all gonna disappear. And so that is, again, that stems back to relationship with my parents and I'll get into all of that on future episodes. I love them both dearly um, and I have really good relationships with both of them now, but there, you know, there was a lot of fear when I was growing up that, um, that things weren't going to stay the way they were because they just, my parents were wonderful and they stayed married for 35 years, but frankly, they were not the best match for each other in a lot of ways. And, and I think I sensed that as a little girl and I, I sensed that they were probably going to split at some point, which they did at, um, when I was in college and I was afraid of that. And so that has really shown up in my relationship with money and it's been a beautiful opportunity to heal that. So just some quick resources that have helped me there um, Joe Dispenza, if you are a Joe Dispenza follower or listener, you know what I'm talking about. If not, go start following his stuff. He has an abundance meditation that, oh, it's good. It's really good. Um, when I started doing it consistently, just really cool stuff started showing up in my life. I would unexpectedly get checks and um, new clients and even just fun gifts in the mail. And it was really, what I've learned is it's really more about how you feel than the actual physical things that are showing up around you, but that's been really powerful. And then also check out um, Abraham Hicks and some of their work because that gets, to me, that gets into the core of a lot of our issues around money. So with that, um, I have managed to record this while little one is still, I'm watching him on the monitor. He's stirring, but he's not up yet. Um, so I am going to wrap before I push my luck too much further. Here's what you can expect, all right? And thank you so much for the opportunity to, just thank you so much for the opportunity to have these conversations with you. It is good for me and my soul and my heart to be sharing this, and I hope it's been helpful for you as well. We're gonna have a mix of solo episodes like this, and then I'm also bringing on other women, most of whom have crossed six figures. We didn't even really get into the six-figure conversation today, but a lot of my heart and passion is helping women break through their first six figures and then go beyond that. You know, there's, there's no, nothing magical about the six figure number. And in fact, once you reach it, you usually realize, oh shoot, I need more to, <laughs> to live the life I really want to live. But I know for me, when I was first starting, that was really that first kind of threshold I wanted to cross where I thought, man, if I could just hit six figures, I would, I'd be successful. I'd have it made. And six figures is a lot of money right? Like we're not sneezing at six figures. It is a good chunk of money and you can do a lot of good in the world there. So I want to help you. If you're not there yet, I want to help you get there as quickly 
as possible and again in the way that feels good and is sustainable for you and then if you've gone beyond that i think you're still going to find a lot of value here to help you reach your next financial level so with the interviews all of that was a long way of saying the women that I'm bringing on, mostly women will have some men. And I've actually got a really cool, very big name guy lined up um, who to interview for you in the next month that I think you're going to love the, um, the interview. But with the people I'm bringing on here, most of them have crossed six figures or beyond. So they're going to talk about their journey there. Um, but I also want to be clear, this is not just about bringing on the names you hear on every other podcast and Man, I mean, there's amazing, there are amazing mentors and leaders out there who have, some have developed huge names for themselves. And this is not to say I am not going to welcome them on this show. And I've got some of them lined up for you on the show and really excited about that. Um, and they've, they've done the work. They deserve where they are. And with that being said, I think sometimes we see the same names again and again on our podcast queue. And I want to highlight and feature and bring on women whose stories you haven't heard. And women who don't necessarily have that quote unquote big name yet, but have a heck of a lot of value to you because how else do they start to get their voices heard? You know, if they can't make it onto a podcast until their name is big enough, how's their name going to get big enough? <laughs> right. It's kind of the chicken or the egg. So if you or someone, you know, has crossed the six figure mark, wants to come on and talk about your journey in sales, um, your journey in growing your business, please reach out Elise at elisearcher.com. I would love to connect and see about doing an interview and highlighting you or them on this show. And then we're going to be talking both strategic sales and business development training, as well as mindset work. So it's both, right? I used to totally discredit the mindset. I would say, give me the hard stuff. Give me the strategy. Teach me how to structure this email. That's all I need. That's not what it's about. I, this was a big misconception I had. That's like 5% of it. So I will just say the mindset, the place you're coming from, your energy, um, that's like, that's 95% of what's going to determine your success. So we're going deep into the mindset stuff too. Um, so with that, I am, like I said, I'm just, I'm thrilled you're here. I want to go deeper into relationship with you as well. Um, I created a cool tool that I think you're really going to like. I, I broke down, you know, a lot of what has helped me be successful over the years has been my morning routine. And this is something I've just gotten a lot of questions on over the years, regardless of with, if I've been doing like true sales coaching and training, or if I've been doing more of the kind of personal branding or development work is just, how do I set a solid morning routine? And I have, I've, I've kind of pulled together a culmination of what I've learned over the years of really studying and spending a lot of money on training and coaching and books and all the things um, into what's the morning routine that's worked for me. And I do attribute a lot of my success and I've you know been able to create two successful businesses um, on my own as an entrepreneur over the past five years with this as my routine. And then even before that, when I was in sales working for somebody else and I was kind of starting to get into the morning routine, this really started to shift and transform a lot of just a, a lot of my results in my life. So I put together uh, a guide for you on how to create a six figure morning routine, which you can get at elisearcher.com slash morning routine. It's for free. Again, elisearcher.com slash morning routine. If you want to grab that and that'll, uh, it'll give you that guide and it'll just help us kind of go deeper into relationship with each other. So, and I think it'll really help and support you if you're trying to figure out how to structure your day for success. Uh, all right. With that, I'm done. <laughs> I'm cutting off. I'm going to go uh, get ready and take care of the little one, but just know how excited my heart is to be here with you. And it has felt so good to record this episode. Um, even, you know, with while it's still dark out and I'm in my glasses and my PJs and it's just, it's been a long time coming. I'm so glad to be here. I'm so glad you're here. I love you. I can't wait to get to know you better. I can't wait to help support you and for us just to grow on this journey together. So with that, I will see you next week for our next episode. Lots of love. Bye for now.